bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Oldman, Mike Beer. The feature race at Oaklawn Park on Saturday is the Grade 3 $750,000 Southwest Stakes. Three-year-olds looking for Kentucky Derby qualifying points at a mile and a 16th. Let's take a look at this field. One of the horses not eligible for qualifying points is your favorite. The six, Arabian Night. Why? He's trained by Bob Baffert. But Arabian Night, a $2.3 million purchase. He looked every penny in his one and only start. Yeah, we saw him on Breeders' Cup weekend for his debut at Keeneland. He looked really, really good uh, winning that seven furlong race with a big figure, Dan. Um, Never really had to get down to serious business that day. This um, is a very interesting spot for him. It's it's very, very early on this derby trail, but this looks like a pretty good field. We know that Baffert has had amazing success at Oaklawn Park over the years with his Southern California Invaders. The pace is going to be interesting in this year's Grade 3 Southwest because two of your main protagonists in here, Arabian Knight and the number two Corona Bolt, they're both stretching out with speed. We know Baffert likes to send his horses, but Corona Bolt, he's going to show speed as well. Maybe this sets things up for a stalker or a closer at a price. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see if they hook up. I, I got to believe Corona Bolt makes the lead in this race from post two stretching out. Um, he's shown pretty big speed in both of his starts sprinting so far for Brad Cox. Arabian Knight's going to be forward, Dan. Um, he looked like he didn't look like a speed crazy horse, even though he wired that field on debut. I think he's going to come forward. And if Corona Bolt is sort of on a scent for the lead, I think they'll sit off that horse. Trainer Kenny McPeak has some nice three-year-olds this year, including the number one, Sun Thunder, a recent maiden winner going two turns at Oaklawn Park, and that was only in his second lifetime start. Let's watch Sun Thunder. He made a big move on the turn, took command turning into the stretch, and names his margin. This was a really nice performance first time going long for a well-bred son of Into Mischief. Yeah, agreed. I'm I'm not sure that this was, you know, a super strong field, Dan, but he did a lot of good things here. Not only the big move that you mentioned around the final turn, but into the first turn, he got into a bunch of traffic. He got bumped between horses, lost a little position, but he was sort of unfazed by that stuff. He set a good trip after that, and he was pretty impressive winning. This is a tough spot, but he might have a setup here. Trainer Brad Cox has so many good three-year-olds right now. Of course, he just won the LeCompte with instant coffee. He's got Verifying coming back. He's got Login somewhere. And he's got three in the Southwest, including the unbeaten number two, Corona Bolt, who's stretching out off a gate-to-wire win in the Sugar Bowl stakes at fairgrounds going three-quarters of a mile. Now, in both of his races, he sort of was up close to slow paces and sprinted on home. Visually impressive, but now he's going to do it around two turns in a race where pace has got to be faster yeah it's got to be I, I like both of his starts his debut um at churchill he didn't make the lead in there but man he was under a big hold uh trying to sit in behind like he didn't really want to do that um but i thought he ran well because i think the runner up of that race is also pretty good and he, he really wouldn't let that horse into it he had a he just had all the best of it last time Danny was too fast for those horses he never really gave them a chance and Giroud didn't even ask him until the eighth pole and then he just ran away I think this horse is talented I'm not sure how far he wants to go six to one on the morning line Flavian Pratt takes the mount the three is Jace's Road Joe Talamo aboard for Brad Cox this one a stakes winner at a mile and a 16th he won the gun runner last time out but he had a very easy trip on the lead in doing so can he sit from off the pace and pass horses I think he can four to one seems a little bit light I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he and Corona both though they sort of swap odds at post time I can see that happening. Um, we'll see if, if people just stay with this horse because he's a stakes winner around two turns. Um, and he does have a relatively fast race in, in his most recent start. I don't know, Dan. I didn't really love any of his first three. And um, he ran fine last time. He made the lead in there. The the horse that wound up third determinedly was four to five. He was, you know, sort of keeping the pressure on. But it just felt like Jace's road was too good for him and uh, managed to get the job done. I, he ran fine last time. I wasn't blown away. We were talking in the Martha Washington Stakes preview about Mr. Lucas running his filly three times during the Saratoga meet. Well, he topped it with the four Western gent. He ran this horse 
four times during the spa meet and got a win before running him in the hopeful. I'm not sure he's graded stakes class right now. Uh, he pushed the pace in the Smarty Jones last time out and tired. Maybe they revert to sort of off the pace tactics here. I mean, they might not have any choice uh, this time. He's got a, an awful lot to prove, obviously. Um, did run probably the best race of his life in the, in the Smarty Jones last time, but he was still no factor in that race. And his other three starts against stakes horses, he just got absolutely buried. McPeak has the five frosted departure and he's the field's lone three-time winner and he earned a stake score last time out going three quarters of a mile in Oaklawn's renaissance on New Year's Eve. Here's frosted departure who got up close to the pace in this race and is very game to prevail. The runner-up came back to run third to the very promising verifying with an 83 buyer speed figure. Yeah, he's pretty game here to get the job done. I, I like the way that he battles here to, to finally prevail at the end. I don't know, Dan, another horse who he feels like he's in tough anyway. Um, they've tried to stretch this horse out twice previously. Um, things did not go well in either of those two races. And this race is probably tougher than those. And all eyes will be on the number six, Arabian Night. He is even money on the morning line. A son of Uncle Mo, he sold for $2.3 million last year. Here's his debut at Keeneland. He was bet to odds on. They knew an Arabian Night didn't disappoint as many backers. He wins by seven, 97 buyer. Yeah, just really impressive here. He had easy speed from the gate to, to make the lead um, sort of on his own power. Johnny V was just kind of toying with this field, Dan. Every time they sort of moved a little bit closer to him, he would just let Arabian Knight move away. Finally asked him a little bit in the stretch, and you see what he did there um, in hand under the wire. Really impressive. Um, seems to be training forwardly since then. Um, I don't know. To me, there's just no telling how good this horse is. Yeah, the word is he's been training lights out leading up to this race, and it's about distance and it's about pace. He's stepping up to face tougher horses, but so far he looks like the goods. If this pace gets fast, maybe a horse with a puncher's chance from the back is the seven, Red Route 1, who was beaten less than two lengths last time out in a graded stakes race at Churchill Downs. He had a little bit of traffic trouble in that affair. It was a race that produced a couple of next out winners with instant coffee, the winner coming back to score the Lecomte with a 92 buyer he'll run late for steve asmussen yeah he will and maybe he'll have something to run at too it'll be interesting to see how this race sets up for him um he's another one where i think it's hard to tell if he's really good enough but i thought his breeders futurity was fine um i'll give him a pass for the sloppy track in the street sense you could see that trouble coming for him last time dan from a mile away you could always tell that he was going to wind up in traffic through the stretch and he did and he only got clear late i thought he ran on pretty well once he saw some daylight you're finally going to get a price on the number eight hit show, the third of the three Brad Cox train runners. He's been favored in all three prior starts, including this race, two life allowance, going a two-turn mile at Oaklawn. Cox has been slow with hit show, and we see him make the lead right here. He's still learning his trade, but once he strikes the front, he finishes the race off in very pleasing style. He has a lot of upside potential. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. The best part of this race is the final, you know, eighth of a mile or 16th of a mile there. He really finishes. Um, that was after, you know, making a move around the final turn. He might not be the most talented of the three cock sources. That remains to be seen. But I think he's the most interesting one in this field. He just looks like a horse who really appreciates distance. He's going to be somewhere off the pace and running at the end. And he's the biggest price of the three. I'm using this horse. And he certainly bred for the distance, being by Candy Ride out of Black Eyed Susan winner, Actress. The number nine is El Tomate, who made a pleasing debut against the weak field at Remington Park, going a demanding seven-eighths for a first-time starter. Let's watch El Tomate last month. And he does it from off of the pace, sweeping by the leaders and winning as much the best. This horse is by run happy, but there is stamina on the bottom of the pedigree. It is a giant step up in class. It is. Unfortunately for him, it kind of feels like he landed in a in a pretty sol uh, solid running of the Southwest here, Dan. I have no knocks on his debut, though. He looked really good winning that race sort of as he pleased. Um, I don't know. Is he going to be able to compete with these horses? I guess that's the big question, but he's a big price if you want to find out. Top pick time in the grade three Southwest at Oakland with Derby qualifying points on the line. Mike, you're going with Arabian Knight. He's certainly the horse to beat based on what we've seen on the track in the uh, afternoon at Keeneland and from what we've seen in the mornings by his workouts. Yeah, I'm, I'm unlikely to have any money in against this horse, but I'm going to play at 6'8". 
I like what I've seen from Corona Bolt in two lifetime starts. And I want to see him take the race to Arabian Night early. Arabian Night hasn't been punched in the mouth yet. Let's see what happens if Corona Bolt can do it, if he's even fast enough to do it. He has plenty of questions to answer as well. But six to one on the morning line seems fair on a horse with this sort of talent. Six, eight, one, two for Mike, two, six, three, five for me. We'll see if Arabian Night continues to live up to his potential in the Southwest.